This Friday, Joker, which is one of the most anticipated films of the year, will be released nationwide in theaters, and the left is still throwing a fit over it, most recently because director Todd Phillips came out and said that the reason no one funny is making comedies anymore is because the woke culture that we have now ruins it, because they can't take a joke. And then, on cue, woke culture responded by attacking him for daring to say this, which in effect just proved his point. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Quick summary of the updates for the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for a chance to win an exact replica of the iconic Heck Off, Kami laptop. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that YouTube doesn't separate us because conservative channels are being censored now for influencing elections, I guess. And also, leave any questions that you want answered during the epic Minecraft Let's Play slash Q&A in the comment section on the climate activist video that I just did. The link to that will be in the description. And it also provides more detail uh, for these announcements. And finally, the Heck Off Kami website and store go live on October 10th, along with the Epic Minecraft Let's Play. Be sure to get the merch before it's sold out. And now we can talk about Joker. So we've already talked about the problems that the left has with this movie, basically that they don't want a story to which disaffected white men can relate. And I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. But what we're going to do here is talk about how the leftists in the media are trying to set this movie up for failure, why they're doing it, why they're particularly triggered by director Todd Phillips coming out and rightfully calling out woke culture, and we'll talk about how painfully not funny leftist comedy is. So firstly, if you don't recognize Todd Phillips as a name, he was the man who directed comedies such as War Dogs, The Hangover Trilogy, and Old School, so he's got a good track record of making comedies, but now he's making this Joker film, which is a total change in style for him, but the film has already been critically acclaimed. Virtually everyone not viewing the film through the tainted lens of progressivism has said that it's basically a masterpiece and he described the process of transitioning from comedies to films such as Joker by saying quote go try to be funny nowadays with this woke culture there were articles written about why comedies don't work anymore I'll tell you why because all the f***ing funny guys are like f*** this sh because I don't want to offend you it's hard to argue with 30 million people on Twitter you just can't do it right so you just go I'm out I'm out. And you know what? With all my comedies, I think that what comedies in general all have in common is they're irreverent. So I go, how do I do something irreverent but f comedy? Oh, I know. Let's take the comic book movie universe and turn it on its head with this. And so that's really where that came from. And of course, the left responds to this criticism of them being unable to resist throwing a temper tantrum by promptly and predictably throwing a temper tantrum. One response claimed that Phillips was overreacting because the woke left won't allow him to say, paging Dr. Faggot in his movies. That's somebody's, That's somebody's daughter, up, daughter there. up there. I was just gonna say that. See? I just wish your friends were as mature as you. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Paging Dr. Faggot! Dr. Faggot! I should go. That's a good idea, Dr. Faggot. That's probably like the funniest scene in the whole movie. And the left literally cannot comprehend this because their entire existence is predicated on victimhood. And so they hear that word and they just instantly think, oh, well, this is oppressive. They don't understand that the joke isn't that the guy just said the word faggot. The joke is that this guy just spent a bunch of time assuring his uptight wife that his friends are mature. And then his friends pull up and yell inside at him in virtually the same way that a group of teenage boys would. And I think a lot of the leftist men that complain about this type of stuff only do so because they've never actually experienced any genuine male camaraderie or if they have they just couldn't take it and they left you know guys insult each other it's how we bond it's how we determine if our friends have balls or not my friend got into a car accident that totaled his car he still made it into work on time i looked him in the eye when he walked in and i told him wow you should have tried a bit harder to die so i could use it as an excuse to leave work early to which he replied something to the effect of well i only tried to kill myself in the first place because i didn't want to see you today that's healthy the guys who have never experienced that or they couldn't take it they're all pusillanimous to use the proper word I used to have this other friend. I'd just say stupid stuff to him. I'd be like, bro, you look like pizza, bro. Or we'd just start making a beat, you know, and just saying the name of his mom over the beat. And he decided to stop hanging out with us because it was affecting his mental health. All right. Who would you rather have with you if you were getting jumped after leaving a bar? A guy that can at least hold his own in some verbal sparring? Or a guy that couldn't even be told, bro, you look like pizza without his mental health being affected? And that's exactly why we do it. It acts as a litmus test. It separates the alphas from the betas. 
betas. And speaking of betas, there was another response to this story from a writer named Rob Tannenbaum, who uh, writes for a handful of left-leaning publications such as the New York Times. And he responded to this by saying, quote, sad to learn that Todd Phillips is a jackass who thinks SJWs are trying to ruin comedy. Also, note the use of the word guys. So this guy's upset because Todd Phillips said that all the funny guys are giving up. And that's offensive because it implies that only men are funny. Well, Todd Phillips isn't wrong in saying that a lot of funny guys have had this reaction to this. I mean, Dave Chappelle just had a whole special hitting on this. Jerry Seinfeld won't do college shows anymore. So he's not wrong in saying that. But I guess this guy thinks that women are just as funny as men. And there was a similar response to this from a woman who claims that Todd Phillips is lazy, is a lazy f And that Twitter account with the handle, oh no, she twittent hits harder than all of his movies. So I figured since, uh, you know, Rob claims that women are just as funny and that this woman claims the same thing, I figured that we just go through some of this woman's hilarious tweets to see what we're missing out on, right? Because we're just too busy watching comedies like The Hangover. Okay, so the pinned tweet, uh, Mom, tell me about Civil War II. Well, honey, we held a rich white man accountable for his actions and he was way too emotional to handle it. Uh, if you don't vote for whoever the Democratic nominee is in 2020, even if, if it's your last choice, seriously, go f*** yourself. The side effects of the flu shot I just got may cause flu-like symptoms. The side effects of my depression medication may cause increased depression. Imagine if the side effects of this sandwich I just ate may cause additional hunger. Oh, that's, that's clever. Because, you know, she's explaining that the things that she's taking to cure these things are actually causing more of the symptoms. So that would be analogous to if she was eating a sandwich and then it caused what she was trying to cure in the first place, which is hunger. So that's, that's clever. Uh, Liz Warren's full name is Elizabeth War on Rich White Men. Because white men kind of sounds like Warren, you know, if you're slow. Mike Pence is like Santa. He has white hair, he doesn't call his wife by her name, and he only comes once a year in the middle of the night when no one is watching. First of all, that's not even factually accurate because Google keeps a Santa tracker, so get dunked on, libtard. Um, if Trump throws Pence under the bus, it'll be a real mic drop. Soon William Barr will become William Disbarred and then William Behind Bars. Pokemon Evolution. Catch that one, kids? Gotta catch them all. Yeah, so I don't know. I didn't really find any of those that funny, but there's another source that we can go to because there's a writer for the Huffington Post and literally her entire job is just to publish the most hilarious tweets from women every week. And so I figured that if the left maintains that women are just as funny as men are and we've got a leftist publication claiming to be compiling the most hilarious things that women are saying each week, I don't know. I just feel like this should answer our question. So uh, we'll go through some of these now. Let's see. She began that day as she began all days, accidentally caffeinating herself to a shattered emotional state. Okay. I have 80 unread emails, and obviously the only solution is to chuck my computer into the sea. Sorry, can't. It's already dark out. Me. Every night from now until about mid-May. Uh. Okay. Me when I mess up at work, Mr. Heck. That's kind of funny. That sounds like one of those Mr. Men books. Every month, me, all of a sudden, horribly depressed and hopeless. No one loves me. I want to cry. What is the point? My period. Hey, girl. Okay. Cough drops are snacks. Sushi ginger is an appetizer. A milkshake is a drink. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. By the age of 25, you should have student loan debt, a favorite spoon, a pack of gum, one song you can safely sing during karaoke, a suspicious neighborhood squirrel that always seems to follow you when you're outside, but you can't prove it. That's kind of funny because you read the first part and you assume that it's going to be a list of legitimate accomplishments, but then it's just silly things. Um, those were kind of stale. We're going to check the ones from two weeks ago. Accessories can really boost a woman's self-confidence. For example, I know I would feel 10 times sexier if I carried a sword with me at all times. That's funny because, you know, you think accessories and you think like handbags or watches or something, but she's talking about swords. So that's a bit of a, a bit of contrast there. Kind of humorous, a bit comical. I don't like the person I become when I'm tracking a UPS package. It's kind of funny. So wild living with my parents again. Like, for example, my mother just told me I have to clean my room because you have a guest coming and the guest is literally my girlfriend. It's funny because she managed to tell us this quirky, zany anecdote about how crazy her life is and then also let us know that she's lesbian. Very funny. Fall is upon us. Eat some candy corn. Drink someone's blood. Ghost that mother 
motherfucker. Get lost in a corn maze forever. Die in a haunted house. Get in the spirit, bitches. That's fun. This, that's one of those, you know, girl things. Like, yeah, girl stuff. Yeah, I get it. The last time I went to urgent care, I checked off excessive crying on the symptom list and the nurse got really confused and told me that was meant for babies. That's kind of funny. I'm a Capricorn. Of course I have a personal board of directors. It's with a heavy heart that I announced that I let another innocent bunch of bananas rot on my kitchen counter for 12 days. She's really quirky because she just, she just doesn't have it together sometimes. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Wait a minute. She replaced it with, please hurl my phone into a lake. She must have some scandalous content on there that she does not want her family seeing. Um, hormones. Hey, what's up? Me. Just reading a book. Hormones, let's get angry. Me, wait, no, hormones and cry. It's funny, it's relatable. It's relatable. Um, yeah, I didn't really find a ton of knee slappers in there. And notice how they're always like in the same template of just, oh my God, you know how society says women should be polite and neat and pretty because I read an article that says that society says that? Well, look at what I'm not doing. I'm not doing that. I'm so quirky and fun to be around. That's not funny. Nothing that you just said is funny, not funny, didn't laugh. And I'm not saying that women can't be funny. I'm just observing that every time the left says, no, 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 look at this woman. She's so funny. It's never funny. And the reason that no one on the left can be funny is because they built their entire identity on being offended by everything. And it makes it pretty hard to find things funny. And I always love the response to that because it's always like, if you need to be offensive to tell a joke, then you're not funny. And it's like, that's big talk coming from somebody that just included a tweet that said, cough drops are snacks. Thanks for coming to my TED talk in their article about the funniest things tweeted by women this week. I mean, these are the people that pretend that Amy Schumer is funny. But as we discussed in the other video that we did about the Joker, the left already had every reason to hate this movie. But now the director comes out and rightfully blames them for harming comedy. And so now there's an even bigger target on his back and also this movie. And so the first batch of negative articles from leftists pertaining to this movie were claiming things like it glorifies incel violence, which we just proved in the other video. Uh, but then they repeat that a few dozen times. And now you've got the whole media churning out articles like police covering Joker screenings over fear of incel violence, theaters increasing security for Joker screenings, military warns troops about violence at Joker movie. It's like they almost want something to happen. They're totally just trying to manufacture this completely non-existent worry of someone being inspired by the movie and going on a rampage. And in fact, by drawing so much unnecessary attention to that movie and relating it to incels, which it literally has nothing to do with, I wouldn't be surprised if someone actually tried to attack a screening of the film just because those types of people want attention and they want notoriety. And the media has been saying for weeks, this movie's gonna inspire incel violence. This movie's dangerous. And so if there's someone out there planning to do something evil to the public, why would you want to give them any ideas or encouragement? Like, hey, look over here. We'll cover your story for months if you play into our pre-designed narrative. And I'm very worried about that. And I don't think the media understands what they're doing. Not that they would even care in the first place because, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, right? But. Hopefully nothing bad happens, but regardless of that, they still want this movie to fail. They don't want this movie, which frankly has evolved into the antithesis of progressivism at this point. Now with the director coming out and saying that it's this woke culture's attitude towards comedy that drove him towards directing this film. I mean, it's a story of a man who feels disaffected by society, a story that a lot of disaffected men in this country could probably relate to. But that doesn't matter to the left because men are the oppressors. And if they're not doing too well in this country right now, well, it's about time because the future is female. And this Joker movie radiates toxic masculinity because the left pretends that the reason men are suffering in this country is not because of the economic consequences of automation or feminism, not because of the opiate crisis, not because of a collapsed family structure or their role in society being undermined by feminists and beta men who think that throwing themselves under the bus will get them laid. No, 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 no. The reason men aren't doing too well is because toxic masculinity keeps them from expressing their feelings. Well, the funny thing about that is that there isn't a shred of credible literature anywhere that supports that theory it does not exist. Men don't suffer when we can't talk about our feelings. The only men you'll ever hear complain about that are the men, like the guy who couldn't take being called pizza without it deteriorating his mental health. The reality is that men just don't like talking about things. It's in our nature. Women falsely conflate a disinterest in talking about issues with an unwillingness to or an inability to because of fear of what society tells men. And that's BS. And hyper-feminine men who enjoy talking about their feelings feel the same way as the women do and pretend that it's because toxic masculinity, that all of this 
this is happening. No, the reality is that men are suffering in this country because our society has undermined the role of masculinity for decades. It has tried to shame masculinity into non-existence. And the dangerous thing about masculinity is that when it isn't channeled properly, it will manifest itself in destructive ways. That's what you're seeing now with the epidemic of male suicide, with mass shootings. All of that is a direct result of repressed and misguided masculinity. But on the other hand, the roads in this country are greatest innovations. Frankly, the society as a whole is a result of masculinity being channeled correctly by finding meaning in one's life. That's what masculinity is. Masculinity is getting up at 6.30 in the morning to work on a construction site to provide for your family. But now, what we're seeing is the result of 50 years of women in the workforce. Men are displaced. Women may be liberated, but they can't change five million years of cognitive evolution, so they still want to date men that make more money than they do, despite women largely out-earning men now. But yeah, the wage gap, big problem, right, feminists? Women are favored in the school systems. They're receiving the majority of advanced degrees now. They now make up the majority of managerial positions in the workforce. Oh, and has any of this made women happier? No. In fact, they're actually more depressed now than men, more depressed relative to men, and than their mothers and grandmothers at the same stage in their lives. This is referred to as the paradox of declining female happiness. But you idiots are still buying into this spoon-fed narrative? Why do you think the oligarchs of society promote feminism? Because when you double the workforce, you get cheaper labor. That's referred to as supply and demand, my friends. How are you actually about to double the labor force and mass import immigrants and be like, hmm, wages are stagnant and it's capitalism's fault? No, it's your fault. Capitalism is a machine, it's a system. And if you make those adjustments to the machine, that's what's going to happen. But it was working a lot better before you made those adjustments, you idiot. And now look at what you've done. You have corrupted the social fabric of this country with your lies and with your propaganda. And you continue to shame men for their natural drive to provide for themselves and for their families. You advocate for policies that replace the father with the state, let that marinate for a few decades. And the reason that men are killing themselves at alarmingly high rates is because they can't talk about their feelings. Go f yourself. Strong men built the world, and if you think that 50 or 60 years of your efforts to feminize men into submission to control society will work, you are wrong. Because if there's one thing that you can learn from history, it's that the strong men will prevail. The men who don't cry because you tell them that they look like pizza. And that's the deciding question of this generation of men, whether or not you're going to submit to the narrative. Are you going to apologize for your masculinity? Are you going to defect to the will of the feminists because they've broken your spirit? Or are you going to rise above that like your father and grandfather and every other man in your blood? bloodline who worked his ass off his entire life just so you could get to this point hundreds of generations later? Are you going to let them put your son on medication for running around in his classroom? Are you going to let them tell you that, oh, well, it's impolite and outdated to hold the door open for women? You're going to submit to the narrative of the oppressive patriarchy and go about your life with this perpetual and weird guilt on your shoulders? Or are you going to follow in the footsteps of the men who came before you, who, when faced with the challenges, overcame them? They stuck to their instincts and they built this country as a result because you've got a lot of power as a man. And it's up to you to decide where that power is applied. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is that you either channel it into something meaningful or you use it to destroy yourself. The left has spent decades in this country trying to prevent men from channeling it into anything meaningful, whether that be employment or fatherhood. And now they're just baffled that men are becoming strung out on drugs and committing suicide. That's why if anyone ever tells you that you have toxic masculinity, just make a mental note that he or she is either dangerously stupid or inconspicuously evil. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, leave it a big comment, and of course, give it a big subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Much appreciated. Got a little heated there, to be honest, but, you know, we gotta take care of our boys. We love our boys. No homo, but, you know. Boys are under attack in this country. Men are under attack. We gotta take care of them, you know. Be proud of your masculinity. Be proud to be a boy. Being a boy is great. Not to say that being a girl isn't great, but being a boy is great, you know. It's like... It's just fun, you know? It's just a good time. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Poof.